1947, truly baseball's banner year. The majors drew a total gate of almost 20 million. In addition to the 20 million, the big leaguers played exhibition games for thousands of hospitalized veterans. These men were unable to go to the big ballparks, so professional baseball came to them. A good example was Professional Baseball Day at Vaughn and Hines Veterans Hospitals. The Chicago White Sox entertained with an exhibition game. 3,000 disabled but courageous fans enthusiastically cheered every play. It was big league ball in unusual surroundings, but it bolstered morale and helped to restore health. It's July 8, 1947. More than 41,000 spectators gather in beautiful Wrigley Field, Chicago to see the 14th annual All-Star Game. The pick of the entire American League is pitted against the National League's All-Star aggregation. Managers Eddie Dyer and Joe Cronin have selected their starting pitchers, Ewell Blackwell and Hal Newhauser. The ground rules are discussed, and it's time to play ball. All through his three-inning stretch of pitching, Blackwell is in fine form, holding the American League All-Stars to one hit and no runs. Pitcher Frank Shea has two men away in the National League fourth. And then Johnny Mize meets one solidly and slams a long home run drive high into the right field bleachers. The National League leads one to nothing. With Harry Burkeen hurling in the sixth, American leaguer Luke Appling bats for Buddy Lewis and singles to left. Ted Williams follows with a base hit to right, and Appling goes to third. When DiMaggio bounces into a double play, Appling scores the tying run. One away, and Johnny Sane pitching. Doors singles to left in the American League seventh. Bobby wastes no time stealing second. On Sane's wild throw, Dorr moves to third. Two men are out when Stan Spence bats for pitcher Shea and lines a hit to right center. Dorr scores with the big run that puts the American League in front two to one. When schoolboy Rowe bats for pitcher Spahn with two away in the National League ninth, his fly ball is gathered in by Tommy Henrik in right field. And the American League wins the 14th annual All-Star Game by a close score, two to one. As you cheer the superb performances of today's big league All-Stars, don't forget the All-Stars of tomorrow, the future major leaguers who will come from the nation's college diamonds. In the 1947 National Collegiate Baseball Championship Series, Yale University, winners of the Eastern title, opposed the Western champions from the University of California at Berkeley. They met on neutral ground, the Western Michigan College Field at Kalamazoo, Michigan. California's manager, Clint Evans, chats with his starting battery. Ethan Allen, Yale's coach, visits with George Sisler, one of the greatest first basemen of all time. Sisler is now scouting future big league talent for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Major league umpires are assigned to work this collegiate championship play. Many of these college players are only a step away from berths in the majors. And who knows, perhaps a favored few are just a year or two removed from stardom in baseball show of shows, that annual fall classic, the World Series. The 1947 Major League pennant races are hardly over 
when thousands of eager fans start to gather at Yankee Stadium. The New York Yankees are about to battle the Brooklyn Dodgers for the World Championship of Baseball. Noted baseball personalities are waiting for the game to start. Near the bomber bench is William Harridge, president of the American League and a Yankee rooter. Ford Frick, president of the National League, is out to root for the Dodgers. Baseball's commissioner, Albert Chandler, lends the classic his official prestige. Ed Barrows, former Yankee executive, is out to see the series. Horace Stoneham, president of the New York Giants, is on hand for the game. The greatest slugger in baseball history, the Bambino himself, Babe Ruth, intends to take in every game of the series. Yankee manager Bucky Harris has a last-minute conference with his two coaches, Charlie Dressen and Red Corridor. The Yankee freshman pitching star, Frank Shea, gets limbered up and ready to go for the Bombers. Manager Bert Schotten of the Dodgers is eager for the game to start. 21-year-old Ralph Barranca, with 21 victories for the season, is warming up for Brooklyn. Umpires and coaches settle last-minute ground rules, and game time is almost at hand. With the playing of the national anthem, the tremendous opening day crowd comes to its feet. And within a few minutes, the first game of the 1947 World Series will be underway. In the Dodgers half of the first with one out, Jackie Robinson draws a base on balls. He dances back and forth to worry pitcher Shea, who tries to pick him off. On Shea's second pitch to Reeser, the fleet-footed Robinson lights out for second and beats catcher Barra's hurried throw to Rizzuto. Pete Reeser taps the next pitch right back to Shea, and the surprised Jackie is trapped and run down between second and third. Reeser moves to second on the play. Dixie Walker's single to left brings Reeser across the plate with the first run of the 1947 World Series. The Dodgers still lead one to nothing in the fifth when DiMaggio makes the first Yankee hit of the series. After walking McQuinn, Barranca hits Johnson on the left arm and the bases are loaded with nobody out. Up comes Johnny Lindell. Lindell lines a double deep into the left field corner, scoring DiMaggio and McQuinn to put the Yankees ahead two to one. Johnson stops at third. Rizzuto walks. The bases are loaded again. Still nobody out. Bobby Brown, left-handed pinch hitter, is sent in to bat for Shea. Yankee manager Bucky Harris is going all out for a big inning. With the count on Brown, two balls and no strikes, Pitcher Berman replaces Barranca, who had hurled hitless ball through four innings. Berman walks Brown, forcing Johnson over the plate. Score three to one, Yanks. Sternweiss rounds to Robinson, who forces Lindell at the plate. The bases are still loaded. Tommy Henrik single sharply to left, scoring Rizzuto and Brown with the fourth and fifth runs of the inning. That five-run blast puts the Yankees in the lead, five to one. Relief pitcher Joe Page is hurling in the Dodgers' sixth when Stanky slashes one through the box into center field for a single. With one out and Robinson safe on a fielder's choice, Reeser chops a high bounder along the first baseline and is credited with a single when he swerves away from McQuinn's lunging attempt to tag him. After Walker lines to Henrik, Carl Ferrello batting for Hermansky punches a three and two pitch into center field for a base hit. Jackie Robinson scores Dodger run number two as Reeser races to third. The score, Yankees five, Dodgers two.
In the Brooklyn seventh, on a wild pitch by Page, Reese scores all the way from second with the third Dodger run. In the bomber eight, DiMaggio drives deep into left center where Frillo makes a fine catch. When Reese is thrown out by pitcher Joe Page in the Dodger ninth, the first game of the 1947 World Series goes to the Yankees, five to three. Yanks and Dodgers warm up for the second game of the series in Yankee Stadium. Manager Bert Schotten is starting the little southpaw, Vic Lombardi. Bucky Harris will pin Yankee hopes on the strong right arm of Allie Reynolds, who pitched 19 wins against eight losses during the season. In the Yankee first, Sternweiss singles to right. When Henrik lines a base hit into center field, Sternweiss hustles to third. Lombardi forces Lindell to hit into a fast double play. Jorgensen to Stanky to Robinson. Sternweiss scores on the play. The Yankees jump into a one to nothing lead. Reese walks in the Brooklyn third. After two men are retired, he steals second. When Jackie Robinson dumps Reynolds' fastball pitch into short left for a single, Reese scores and ties up the ball game at one apiece. In the Yankee third, Sternweiss triples. After Henrik fouls out, Johnny Lindell follows with a three base hit over Reeser's head into deep center field. Sternweiss scores and the Bombers lead again two to one. The People's Choice Dixie Walker takes a toehold at the plate in the Dodger fourth and wallops a homer over the 344 foot marker far back into the right field stands, tying the score at two all. In the Yankee fourth, Bill Johnson gets three bases on a hit to center when Reeser falls down going after the long drive. Rizzuto drops a Texas leaguer in short left center field. It falls between Hermansky and Reeser for a double. Johnson scores. The Yankees lead three to two. On the first pitch, Tommy Henrik opens the Yankee fifth with a rousing home run blast into the right center field bleachers. The Yankees added one more run in the inning to put them in front, five to two. Scoring again in the sixth and four more times in the seventh, they lead 10 to two as the game goes into the Brooklyn ninth. With Allie Reynolds coasting on a substantial lead, Hermansky opens with a walk. After Edwards flies to Lindell, Reese singles to left, sending Hermansky to third. When Jorgensen forces Reese at second, Hermansky scores on the play. Al Gianfrido is sent in to bat for pitcher Rex Barney. Gianfrido's grounder to Johnson, forces Jorgensen at second, and puts an end to game number two. The Yankees scored in all but two innings off of four Dodger pitchers to win easily 10 to three. Six of their 15 blows were for extra bases. And now to Ebbets Field for game number three. The Dodgers know they have to win on their home lot to remain in the series. Among the fans are the lovable Connie Mack, famous leader of the Philadelphia Athletics. The former pitching star of the New York Giants, Carl Hubble. Dynamic Bill Beck, president of the Cleveland Indians. John Quinn, general manager of the Boston Braves. And his boss, President Lou Perini. Starting pitcher for the Yankees is Bobo Newsom, 
making his first appearance at Ebbets Field since 1943. Opening for the Dodgers is the southpaw twirler, Joe Hatton. The series stands two games for the Yanks, none for the Dodgers. In the Dodger half of the first, with one out, Jackie Robinson whistles a hit into center field. Jackie lights for second, beats the throw, but is trapped between second and third when he overruns the bag. With one away in the Brooklyn second, and Hermansky on first, catcher Edwards doubles off the left center field fence. Goring Hermansky. Shortstop Reese follows with a single to left center, and Edwards scores. After Jorgensen's out, pitcher Hatton lines a hit to left, and Reese pulls up at second. Both runners advance on a pass ball. Eddie Stanky wallops a telling blow to right field for a double. Scoring Hatton and Reese, the Dodgers lead four to nothing. At this point, Harris replaces Newsom with the tall right-hander, Vic Rashi. Robinson greets Rashi with a base hit to right, and Stanky stops at third. Batting for Reeser, Carl Perillo promptly doubles off the scoreboard in right center to score Stanky and Robinson. After this second inning merry-go-round, Brooklyn is out in front, six to nothing. The Yankees in their half of the third score two runs on three hits, making it six to two. With Carl Drews pitching for the Yanks, Brooklyn adds another run in the third. The Bombers counter with two tallies in the fourth, and the score stands Dodgers seven, Yankees four. Brooklyn scores twice in the fourth to take what appears to be a comfortable nine to four lead. Lindell walks to open the Yankee fifth. DiMaggio steps up to the plate. Southpaw Hatton takes the sign from catcher Edwards. Joe swings and starts one on a trip to Mars. The ball lands in the upper left field seat. That's home run number 64 made by a Yankee in World Series play. Those two runs bring the Yankees within striking distance, nine to six. They score another run in the sixth inning. With one away in the seventh, Barra bats for catcher Lawler. He slams Branca's pitch over the scoreboard in right field for the first pinch hit home run in World Series history. Score, nine to eight. At this point, manager Shotton brings in his ace relief pitcher, Hugh Casey. He promptly gets rid of Page and Sternweiss to end the inning. The Brooklyn fans breathe easier for a moment. With Casey pitching in the ninth, Stanky whips out Barra, and it's victory number one for the Dodgers by a score of nine to eight. You, Casey, and the Dodgers are the toast of Flatbush tonight. Opening on the mound for the Dodgers in game number four is right-hander Harry Taylor. Pitted against him is Floyd Bevins of the Yanks. Snuffy Sternweiss leads off in the ball game with a line single to left field. Tommy Hendricks slams a drive in the center for a base hit, moving Sternweiss to second. After Barra reaches first on Reese's error to fill the bases, DiMaggio walks forcing Sternweiss in with run number one. This is an all-important ball game, and manager Shotton replaces Taylor with right-hander Hal Gregg. After McQuinn pops to Reese, Johnson smashes into a fast double play, and Gregg has pitched the Dodgers out of danger. 
In the Dodger third, Jackie Robinson smacks out a long drive on which Lindell makes a spectacular sprawling backhand catch beyond the left field foul line. Bill Johnson opens the Yankee fourth with a triple deep into center field. Lindell doubles to right, scoring Johnson. The Yanks lead two to nothing. In Brooklyn's fifth, Jorgensen scores the first Dodger run of the game. Yankees two, Brooklyn one. It's the Yankee ninth, and once again, in a tight spot, the mighty Casey saunters in. He winds up, makes one pitch, and Henrik rounds into a double play. Casey to Edwards to Robinson. The Yankees still lead two to one. Going into the ninth, the Yankee twirler, Floyd Bevins, has a no-hit game to his credit. With one man away, it looks bad for the Dodgers until Bevins walks Perillo. Jorgensen pops to first baseman McQuinn and Bevins is only one out away from the first World Series no-hitter ever pitched. At this point, Al John Frito is put in to run for Perillo, and the speedy little fellow promptly steals second on Barra's high throw. The Dodgers gambled everything on this one play. With first base now open, Pete Reeser is purposely passed. Mixis runs for Reeser. The Dodgers trail two to one in the last of the ninth. Two men away, a man on first, a man on second. Manager Bert Schotten sends in Cookie Lavagetto to bat for Stanky. On the second pitch, Lavagetto slams one into right field against the wall where Henrik has trouble rounding it up. Behind John Frito, Mixes scores the winning run of the ball game. All Brooklyn is delirious with joy. Players and fans cheer Lavagetto in the most dramatic finish ever witnessed in the 44-year history of World Series play. The swashbuckling Dodgers roared from behind to trim the Yanks three to two and square up the series. <laughs> Breaking all attendance records for World Series play in Brooklyn, 34,379 fans show up for the fifth game at Ebbets Field. Dodger manager Shotton sends the young right-hander Rex Barney to the mound. Bucky Harris chooses the sensational freshman pitcher Frank Shea to make a second start in the series. Sternweiss walks and the fifth game is underway. Tommy Henrik blasts a double to right center. Sternweiss pulls up at third. When pitcher Barney walks Lindell, filling the bases with no outs, the Dodgers are in trouble. Barney bears down, strikes out the dangerous Joe DiMaggio. McQuinn forces Sternweiss at the plate. Barney to Edwards for the second out. When Johnson fans, Barney completes a magnificent job of pitching to hold the Yankees scoreless in the first inning. With two away in the Yankee fourth, Barney walks both Robinson and Rizzuto. Pitcher Speck Shea takes up his own cause, drills a base hit to left. Scoring Robinson with the first run of the game. Reese throws out Lindell to open the Yankee fifth. Up comes Joe DiMaggio. Barney takes the signal from Edwards. Joe swings, belts one high into the upper left field stands for his fourth home run in World Series competition. The Yankees lead two to nothing. Gene Hermansky's single to right in the Dodger fifth is the first hit off of Shea. In their sixth, Al John Frito bats for pitcher Joe Hatton. John Frito walks. 
After Stanky fans, Reese walks, and the Dodgers are back in the ball game. Jackie Robinson singles to center, scoring John Fido with the first Dodger run of the game. Yanks two, Dodgers one. Opening the Yankee ninth, Henrik reaches first when Mixis bobbles his grounder. Lindell is hit by a pitch ball. Hugh Casey, who took up the Dodger pitching chore in the eighth, appears to be in trouble. But DiMaggio hits into a double play. Reese to Mixis to Robinson, leaving Henrik on third with two men out. Henrik is caught trying to score on a pass ball. When Casey tosses his huge frame in front of the plate, where can Tommy go? Edwards opens the last half of the ninth with a single to left. Vic Lombardi runs for Edwards, and Perillo sacrifices him to second. There are two men away when manager Shotton sends Cookie Lavagetto in to bat for Casey. On a three and two count, Lavagetto goes down swinging for the final out of the ball game. The Yanks manage to squeeze out a two to one victory that gives them a one game edge in the series. An all time record strong of 74,000 jams Yankee Stadium to see game number six. Vic Lombardi will go to the mound for another try at the Bombers. His opponent, Ali Reynolds, is out for his second victory of the series. Stanky starts game number six with a single to left. Reese follows with a single to center. Robinson gets the hit that loads the bases when Lindell loses his fly in the sun. Dixie Walker grounds into a double play, Rizzuto to Phillips, and Stanky scores. On a pass ball, Reese counts run number two for the Dodgers. In the Brooklyn third, when Walker slams out the third double of the inning, Robinson scores. The Dodgers lead four to nothing. In the Yankees half of the third, Lawler doubles to left. And moves to third on a wild pitch. When Jorgensen fumbles Sternweiss's grounder, Lawler scores. Singles to center. And Sternweiss is out trying for third on a great throw from Perillo to Jorgensen. Henrik reaches second on the play. Lindell singles to right center, scoring Henrik. DiMaggio's base hit knocks Lombardi out of the box. Ralph Baranka comes in to do the honors. Johnson singles to right field, scoring Lindell and sending DiMaggio to third. Bobby Brown, pinch hitting for Phillips, singles, scores DiMaggio with the run that ties the game at 4 all. The Yankees go ahead in the fourth when Vera slams a base hit over first that brings in Aaron Robinson. Eddie Stanky disagrees with umpire Eddie Rommel about Vera's drive, but the Yankees lead five to four. With Joe Page pitching, Edwards opens the Dodgers sixth with a base hit to right. Peru 
Oliver wallops a two-bagger to left that sends Edwards to third. Lavagetto batting for Jorgensen flies out to Vera. Edwards scores after the catch. Bobby Bregan bats for Branca and doubles to left, scoring for Rillo. When Stanky wraps the single to right, Don Bankhead running for Bregan makes a jolting, foul-pleasing stop at third. That's all for the Yankee southpaw, Joe Page, who replaced Carl Drews in the Dodger fifth. Buck Newsom takes over the Yankee pitching chore. Pee Wee Reese beats Newsom with a base hit to left center, scoring Bankhead and Stanky with runs three and four of the inning. The Dodgers lead eight to five. Joe Hatton is pitching for Brooklyn in the Yankees sixth with runners on first and second and two men away. DiMaggio smashes a long, long drive into deep left field. John Frito, after a desperate twisting run to the 415-foot marker, makes a sensational gloved hand catch of DiMaggio's terrific wallop. This greatest of all World Series outfield catches stopped a sure home run and prevented the three runs that would have knotted up the game at 8-8. Eight and eight. Johnson singles and McQuinn walks to open the Yankee night. Nobody out. Hugh Casey replaces Joe Hatton. This is Casey's fifth relief job in six games. After Rizzuto flies to center, Aaron Robinson singles to left. Johnson stops at third, and the bases are full. Lonnie Fry bats for the pitcher, forces Robinson at second, but Johnson scores on the play. Hugh Casey throws out Sternweiss to end the sixth game. The Dodgers defeat the Yankees 8-6 to six, and even the series at three games apiece. The all-important final game will be played before 71,548 excited fans. To hurl for Brooklyn in this crucial game, manager Shotton selects tall Hal Gregg. In the finale, it's a third start for the well-worked Spec Shea. In the Brooklyn second after one out, Hermansky smashes a line drive that hits the right field wall on one bounce. It skips past Barra, enabling Hermansky to stretch the hit into a three-bagger. Edwards follows with a single inside the third baseline, and Hermansky scores. Perillo bangs a base hit to center. Edwards stops at second. Floyd Bevins replaces Shea on the mound for the Yankees. The Dodgers lead one to nothing, one out. John Jorgensen greets Bevins with a ground rule double that skips into the right field stands on one hop. Edwards scores, and the Dodgers take a two to nothing lead over the Yankees. The Bombers tally in their half of the second. The score, Dodgers two, Yankees one. In the Yankee fourth with two away and Johnson on first. Rizzuto singles to left, sending Johnson to second. Bobby Brown bats for pitcher Bevins and slices a double to left that scores Johnson with the tying run and sends Rizzuto to third. That double gives the Yankee rookie, Bobby Brown, a perfect pinch-hitting performance with a walk, a single, and two doubles. His three hits are a record for a series pinch hitter. The Dodgers send in Hank Behrman to replace Hal Gregg. Behrman walks Sternweiss. Henrik smacks a base hit to right. Scoring Rizzuto with the second run of the inning. The Bombers lead 3-2. to two. They add another in the sixth. In the Bombers' seventh with one out, Bill Johnson smacks Casey's pitch for a long ride to left center. 
Mixis misjudges the hit, and it falls behind him for a triple. On Aaron Robinson's fly to Mixis, Johnson scores after the catch. The Yankees lead 5-2. to two. Southpaw Joe Page, who replaced Bevins in the fifth, has set down 13 successive batters. But in the Dodger ninth with one out, Eddie Mixis wraps Page's pitch into center for a single. Edwards hits into a game-ending double play, and the New York Yankees close the victory book with a 5-2 win over the Brooklyn Dodgers. It's their first World Series title since 1943 and their 11th crown in 15 World Series appearances. The victory was no one man's success, but a triumph of team skill and determination. Now Yankee Stadium empties and the doors close on the 1947 baseball season. We'll be back again next year when more millions of baseball fans will be spinning the turnstiles to watch another exciting season of our national pastime.